Hello everyone, welcome back for another book review. So today we are talking about this one. So this is Magic and Power of the Goddess, Initiation, Worship, and Ritual in the Western Mystery Tradition by Gareth Knight. So that last little bit is pretty important for this book and I honestly didn't really realize that until I actually read through it this time. So the backstory with this one is that I had got this when I was trying to do one of the many groups that I had tried when I was in college and it was supposedly going to be a group that was mostly focused around the worship of Isis. At the time I was trying to like maybe rebuild that relationship a bit with her and so this was one of the first books they said you had to read. Now the thing is, uh, this is not my speed. I didn't do much with that group. The person that was supposed to be like kind of like my mentor never actually responded, ever. <laughs> and so I gave up after a couple weeks of like radio silence. I was like, well, this is stupid. Um, like I think I had like one or two phone calls with them and that was it. And it was like, this is, this is really dumb. I don't like not having... Communication, going both ways, so no. I had started to go through this book, and I think I might have even finished it, and I was just kind of like, oh, whatever. At the time, I was just trying to be, like, really positive about it, but honestly, this time around, I couldn't be. As I mentioned earlier, the main focus is this last little bit, Western mystery tradition. Now, I had to go and Google that, because it's not something I've really come across, and so the best way to describe it is Christianity meets the occult. You keep the Christian ideas and then you just sprinkle some magic-y stuff on top of it. Because really that's what this is. It's not something I like. I'm honestly debating on just throwing this into the donation pile because it's not something I'm gonna care about ever. So, because as I've mentioned, I don't keep Christian books on my shelves. It's not something I care about. It's not something I'm ever gonna incorporate into my practice. And so this is, that's what this book is. So it's probably just gonna, more than likely, I won't even put it on the banished books. I it might just end up going into donation. I'm debating between the shelves, honestly. Do I put it on the banished books list or do I just donate it because I don't keep Christian literature? Struggling with it. But anyways, what is this book, you might be asking? So basically this book kind of goes over some of the goddess myths, kind of-ish. I don't know Greek mythology terribly well. You know the basics of it that you learned in like high school and like the little bits that you experience in like your day-to-day -day life, like obviously like Disney did like Hercules. So like you know kind of the story. Obviously, it's disney fied so it's not the original. <laughs> but like, on a whole, I've never been interested in Greek mythology. It's not something I've ever been particularly fond of. I don't care. <laughs> like, some people love it and that's fantastic. And I just don't, but that's fine. Some people do, that's great. Oftentimes, a lot of authors in the pagan community leech towards the Greeks because we have a lot of information on them. Other cultures, not so much. And so it's easy to pick the one that we have all of the information on. And so because of that, this author doesn't really explain the myths terribly well and like the context in which it matters. And it's just kind of like randomly explained. And honestly, it was rather boring writing for me as well. So I was just like, oh my God, what are you talking about? I'm not huge into mythology. I've said this before. The only book that has ever caught my interest in mythology has been Neil Gaiman's book. Other than that, I get bored super fast because it's really academic and it's just not written in a way to catch your mind. It's written in a way to kind of tell an old story, but you're constantly referencing to where you got your sources and I just get bored. I don't care. It's not a fun story to read. The only one that has, again, has been Neil Gaiman. So that said, like the myths I got bored with. and. The other big part of this book, I mean, it does mention a little bit here and there, like it kind of talks about Isis, kind of-ish, but then it pretty quickly devolved into Christianity. And even then, at the beginning of the book, we did have some Christian stuff too. It talks about like casting a circle, but then you're invoking the archangels, which is like, okay, some witches do, that's, you know, if you want to, that's fine. I never will. But then as we get further into the book, it's like, oh, we have the Virgin Mary, and the Blessed Mother and all of that and just progressively was getting more and more and more and more and more Christian. And uh, the last page of this book truly solidified it. Normally I don't read the uh, quotes very often because I suck 
at reading out loud, but we're just gonna read some of the last page of this book because I just feel like this is the best way to describe this book. This is the real craft lore that is needed to help the travailing earth. It is also the real churchmanship that is needed. God created the earth as well as the church, and the two are not, and I'm gonna mispronounce this word, just so we all are aware, I suck at pronouncing words. Irreconceivable, that word. I can say it in my head, I can't say it out loud. This is why I don't have audiobooks, because I can't read. <laughs> like, I can read, I just can't verbalize it. I really hated reading out loud in school. I've never gotten good at it. The great divorce is only in the narrow minds and constricted hearts of men and women. Reflect upon these deep things, and thus may the wisdom of the stars shine in your brow, the grail of love flow from your heart, the waters of life encompass your loins, and the stones of the earth support your feet. This is the image and function of redeemed humanity, the new Adam and the new Eve, conjoined in the new heaven and in the new earth, the new Avalon where the green apples have turned to gold. Gah! I can't. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Nope. 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 Instant no. So yeah, that's that's where that's that's my my feelings on the book. I did not realize that Western mystery tradition whatever. Uh, was uh, heavily Christian. Didn't know that, so that was my bad. Again, I had bought this because it was like one of the required readings for a group I was in for like maybe a month, eons ago. Like, probably, oh, going on eight years ago. Like, I think it was like 2014, 2015-ish that I considered it, so like, it's been a while. But yeah, it's just one of those books where you're like, oh my god, no. So yeah, again, I haven't decided if I'm gonna get rid of this or I'm not but I typically don't keep a lot of Christian books because I'm never going to be interested in it. So there's no point in it cluttering up my bookcase. And so, I mean, it has some mythology, but honestly, it just, it doesn't feel like a pagan book. It doesn't feel like a witchcraft book. So I don't know. I'm debating on it. And there's not any people really talking about this book. So I, I don't know if that's like a common thing, if people loved this book, if they didn't. I don't know. Um, there's very, very few reviews on Goodreads and on Amazon. So it's just kind of a hit or miss on this one. I, I didn't like it. But again, the reason I don't like it is because of the content that it is supposed to be written upon. So that wasn't my bad. Didn't know that at the time. So I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments down below or just as a funsies, which is a book that you bought, whether it was because a group told you to or if you just happened to stumble upon it and you thought you were getting a book on like Wicca and paganism and witchcraft and then it ended up being completely not. I would love to hear about one of those in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen. If you'd like to support me and get access to exclusive content, it is patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to like and subscribe. I post every single day. And until tomorrow, thank you so much for watching and bless be.